Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorn. In today's video, I would like to address Socionics, and I argue that Socionics is a system that lacks practical validity. Now, I don't mean to bash Socionics completely here. I think Socionics is extremely fun of a system. It offers a lot of intellectual play. It offers a lot of new theory, a lot of new potential, and it's hard to dismiss all of it at once, because there must be, beyond all the difficulties and the challenges of the system, also theories that offer promise and potential. My main argument about the low validity of socionics rests on the fact that socionics in itself has been unable to derive any strong external evidence that its system is working. The system can work to a person who is traversed in socionics and who knows its methodologies and who is skilled at using and correlating the theories in themselves to each others. But the theory struggles to produce strong statistics in its personality tests, strong definitions of its terms, strong clear contrasts between its terms, and strong examples on what the differences between different terms are. Often there is a big issue in socionics with the use of technical jargon. Socionics uses jargon in a sloppy and unscientific manner. It uses terms like ego and superego. It uses terms like Viktor Gulenko's model G. And it uses a lot of these terms without giving any sense of definition for them in themselves. While most of us are working very hard to fight ambiguity and to fight the four effect, it feels like socionics continues to use the four effect to create self-fulfilling hypotheses. If you don't provide a definition, if other people can provide their own definition, then anybody can interpret anything to mean anything. And that way, socionics will be accurate to everybody. Often, socionics has this issue of, instead of providing evidence to its claims and definitions, providing new definitions to evidence the old definitions, and then after clicking there, you get new definitions to add to those definitions, creating this reign of new terms, new jargon, new definitions that often lack explicit or clear definitions. What Socionics does is introduce 11 new personality traits beyond the traditional four, beyond introvert and extrovert, intuitive or sensor, feeling or thinking, judging or perceiving. They create these 11 new traits, so-called reigning dichotomies. They uh, add traits like if you are a positivist or a negativist. It adds traits such as if you're aristocratic or democratic. It suggests that people can be divided into merry or serious types. And orienting yourself within these concepts is a difficulty in itself. And that is why a lot of the time the increase of the popularity of socionics can be attributed to the development of the four quadrants. The four quadras were an attempt to organize these different values, three and three and three and three, uh, dividing people into alphas, betas, gammas, or deltas. However, the unlucky tendency of these quadras, and my main issue with these quadras, is its tendency to create associations to class in society. There are also the quadras, which are, interestingly, the exact same organization as my quote function axes categories. The, what I call the philosophers are group alpha, the saints are group beta, the royals are group gamma, and the free spirits are group delta. Alpha already in itself carries a tendency to describe rank in society, what your role is, how dominant you are, how popular you are, how likely you are to be in a position of leadership. And I think that the main issue with socionics is its desire to want to describe everything. Everything you do is a result of your personality type. When in fact, personality type affects certain things about you, but not everything about you. There are many things about us that keep on changing. We keep on changing our values and beliefs as we get older. We develop ourselves. We grow. Our status goes up and down. We can be people who used to be fiercely popular to becoming people who are almost hated or loathed in a matter of days. And perhaps that's the issue with socionics. It just goes too far. 
I think because it goes too far and because it provides too many traits, it spends too little time actually developing evidence for each specific trait, for each specific dichotomy. Just defining introversion or extroversion is a feat in itself and it takes, it takes a tremendous amount of research and focus to land clear, explicit, easily uh, tell the part definitions. Because socionics so rarely provides good definitions of the terms, we are left producing our own definitions of the terms and this is what creates so much ambiguity. We find ourselves reading into the terms what we want to read into them. We find ourselves uh, just adding our own placeholder definitions to every single word or trait and it becomes something different to each person. And true it is, even though I've studied socionics for years now, I feel like the grasp I have of the system is still extremely low and I think a lot of people will point that out. I will have a lot of comments down below saying I misunderstand socionics or that I've used the wrong definition of socionics or that I've, I'm using the wrong model of socionics. But guys, seriously, you have too many models. The biggest problem with the jargon and the ambiguity is that it alienates the reader. It makes the reader feel stupid when the reader isn't stupid. The problem is so big and it's been brought up by so many people that it needs to be discussed. All social systems have the issue of ambiguity. There it's hard even in the MBTI to create clear definitions and to create cohesion between different people in different circles of the MBTI, agreement on what personality types different people are, agreements on how to define different personality traits. But in socionics the problem becomes even bigger. And true it is, a valid, reliable, system of personality types needs a certain few things to function. There needs to be an accurate personality test or an accurate and objective way of defining personality types. The definitions need to be strong enough to stand on their own legs. There needs to be a clear theory on how to use this test result to develop yourself, to learn more about yourself, to improve yourself in whatever way you wish. And we need to get rid of our annoying habit to be obsessed with categorizing people. Socionics didn't get rid of the boxes the Myers-Briggs type system invented and placed on people. It actually just added more boxes to put people in. Suddenly if I'm scared of talking publicly about sexual issues, it's because of my personality type, not because of my Catholic upbringing. The serious issue of boxing people in is that it limits people. Seriously, people find themselves really thinking that, oh, because I'm this type, I'm like this, and that means I will always be like this. I won't need to change. I can just cling to this way of being. But that doesn't promote growth in the slightest. Now, some of you might be wondering, like, what is the biggest difference between socionics and Myers-Briggs type indicator? Personally, I think the biggest difference is this. INFJ and socionics, called an IEI, would have introverted intuition and extroverted feeling as the top two. But then directly after that would be extroverted thinking and introverted sensation. Then introverted thinking and extroverted sensation. And then... I think that while in the Myers-Briggs system there is a tendency to consider introverted intuition as the stark opposite of introverted sensing, in socionics introverted intuition's biggest opposite, the biggest polar, is extroverted intuition. Further organizes these eight roles into four blocks, which some of you may have heard referenced by Yeghor in the comments. There's the ego block, which contains the first and second functions, the superego contains the third and fourth, the super id contains 5 and 6, and the id contains 7 and 8. Now here's just one of the problems. The definitions here, ego, super ego, super id, and id can lead someone to think that, oh, socionics rests on psychological research, but the definitions of the terms are so far from the original definitions that it's strange. I don't understand how they even got there. The id was supposed to be, represent a person's more primal instincts, one's primal drive, uh, our sexual instincts, if you may. Socionics, however, defines the id as our strong, one of our strongest abilities and as something we don't even value or care about. 
in traditional Freudian theory, the superego is about our higher conscience. It's meant to control the influence of the air. It's about our ideal version of ourselves, what we wish us we were, what we strive towards becoming. Does an INFJ strive towards becoming an ISTJ? No, and that's not what socionics means either. Socionics describes the superego as something we only improve at as a means to achieve our goals of the ego. And if there's no desire to use these definitions in their traditional purpose, that makes me wonder why you even use them to begin with. Was the goal only to present an aura of being scientific, even when you weren't? In socionics, INFJs and ESTPs fit to a T. And in many ways this goes completely against, for example, Jan Beebe and modern Myers-Briggs cognitive function theorists. Now the reason I clash with this is because I think that intuition and feeling represents an INFJ's dominant values. I have much more combined with ENFPs or INFPs when it comes down to values than I do with ISTPs or ESTPs. Usually what interests me is the same thing that interests an ENFP or an ENTP for that matter. Usually what gives me a sense of fulfillment is the same thing that gives an ENFJ or an INFP the same sense of meaning and importance in their lives. And now I'm not saying that INFJs and ESTPs don't date, I think that actually happens and I think it has its benefits. But I'm saying that it's not the only common app option and it's not the only positive one. To me, intuition and feeling represents a person's and INFJ's or an ENFP's core values, while introversion and judging represents an ISTJ's or an INTJ's core temperament. And the temperament is primarily about reducing stress and anxiety, while the values are about providing our lives with meaning and interest and excitement, giving us that sense of, wow, this is fun. I am much more likely to side with Jan Beebe when describing which functions are the most native to an ENFP or an ENTP. In order, for an ENFP it is extroverted intuition, introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted sensing. Then it is introverted intuition, then it is extroverted feeling, then it is introverted thinking, and then it is extroverted sensing. To me, the ENFP mode is a flow state to the ENFP. It's how they reduce anxiety and stress while becoming more motivated and more stimulated. To me, the ISTJ mode for an ENFP represents how an ENFP lashes out under stress and anxiety. To me, the INFJ mode represents the ENFP's repressed values and beliefs and opinions, repressed in the sense that it's not their core behavior, but it's something they can engage in when they are given the support by their environment. And finally, the ESTP mode represents the ENFP's autopilot. It represents what they do without thinking. It just happens. There's no conscious effort to do it. It's not something they dwell on. It's something that just happens. But yeah, maybe I got something wrong. Maybe I'm completely out in the blue here. Feel free to tell me what uh, socionics really means. Feel free to clarify where I gone wrong. Feel free to argue against my claims if I'm wrong. And do check out Michael Pierce and his videos on socionics if you're interested in learning more about the system. So that's all I have to say for now. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike. That's okay, I'm ha fine. Thank you all for watching this video and for taking my arguments seriously and for helping us learn more about the nature of type and psychology.